This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Oh, Stanley. <sighs> you know... You really aren't going anywhere, and I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone, give me a chance, and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Good, good. Now, if you don't mind, there's something I'd like to show you. But to do that, I think it would be best for us to start from the beginning. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. His job pushing buttons demanded little of him, so there was not much of himself to give, and in this way, Stanley's job felt less and less like his every day. But if buttons need pushing one day, it means they'll need pushing the next and then the next. So, without question or judgment, Stanley continued to do what the screen told him. One keystroke flowed into another keystroke, flowed into his ride home, flowed into dinner, flowed into waking up, flowed into going to work, and here he was again. Stanley was typing out a complete sentence that said absolutely nothing at all. 
If in reality no one ever actually disappeared from the office and Stanley never got the opportunity to make a decision, to choose which path he wanted to take, would his life still have any meaning? Perhaps when we long for something deeply enough, these hopes and fantasies become so strong in our minds that we truly believe that we're there, controlling that person and living that adventure. To manipulate your own thoughts and emotions might mean freedom from a self-imposed prison, but these delusions can be fatal to those who can't tell the difference. And so, Stanley asked, if that door never opened, if I'll never be able to walk away from those people and from these buttons, is this life still worth experiencing? Am I actually happy? Stanley answered this question by pushing a button. Then he pushed a button, and then he pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. Then 